Chase at the 40. Look at that move. Look at Chase go. Oh, my goodness. What a gear. He comes down to this in his car end zone. Intercepted. McPherson. And Cincinnati is heading to the Super Bowl. Boss here. Nix is going to throw. Open name. Tor Higgins. Touchdown. Drives. Touchdown. Joe Burrow has his first rushing touchdown of the season. Who day, Bengal fans? He is Mon. I am Jake. This is the Bengals Pulse, the heartbeat of our Cincinnati Bengals. Mon, episode 22 is here. Another rough game. Another rough Sunday. We uh, we have a lot to unpack tonight, uh, and we will get to that. But before we do, Mon, tell me about your week, man. How's your week been going? Uh, it's uh, been going good. I uh, worked a lot. Uh, I was really excited about the game uh, Sunday. Disappointed. Uh, the last thing I expected was our Bengals to be 0-2. But, um, you know, had some reflection. Still frustrated about it, but uh, – I think we can turn things around, uh, praying we can. So uh, the week would have been better if we would have won. Let's put it that way. Yes, agreed, agreed. Well, um, I will say really quick, my guys, uh, my guys bounce back. We got our first district win. Uh, we're now four and one. So proud of my boys bouncing back after uh, after losing a, a heartbreak uh, breaker the week before. So. Uh, so good week, uh, good week up until Sunday. Let's uh, let's dive into this thing, Mon, because again, like I said before, man, so much, so much to unpack. Obviously, a lot of frustration uh, right now with with our fan base, uh, with you and I too, as well. Uh, we are right there with it. Uh, our Bengals lose twenty to seventeen to the Dallas Cowboys. Another loss on the last play of the game uh, again you, me. bless you 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 would think <laughs> you would think uh wait before i go any further mon did you take your medicine am i gonna I hear did. any am i gonna hear any <laughs> any medicine reminders alexa's unplugged my dog is in here so if you hear a bark it is what it is but alexa's unplugged okay so so you took your medicine that's good uh Man, I, I feel like we all, all of us Bengal fans needed to take some medicine uh, Sunday night after that that game. Again, the Bengals lose 20 to 17. On the last play of the game, Mon, I mean, it's <laughs> this is becoming uh, just heartbreak city uh, for us Bengal fans. Uh, you know, again, they 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 play a football team that is not not on the same level as the Bengals. The Bengals play down to them. And uh, and lose a game they never should have lost. Mon, how you feeling about Sunday? Not good, <laughs> not good at all. Um, it's frustrating. Um, you know uh, uh, the issues from last year coming back to haunt us. I think we have better talent on the offensive line. It's just not showing. Uh, you know. I was in Twitter spaces today. It was therapeutic a little bit, but I was on the regular Twitter. And there's so many mad scientists, these guys that just throw numbers out. And, you know, I mean, I follow them. I respect them. But, you know, sometimes I, I just see better than I read on Twitter. I'm watching the game and, and what they're trying to spew out and, and throw out. Just it doesn't translate to what was happening on the field. And, uh, you know, a lot of frustration there that we are not going to be where we need to be as a team until those four new starters actually start communicating and playing better. You saw halftime of the game. Uh, Zach Taylor was interviewed by the sideline reporter. He says both sides they were not communicating. Man, you know, I mean, we can't treat the first two games of the season as a preseason game. They're not preseason games. These okay. actually count in the standings. And, all I got to say is I'm grateful for the Jets, the Patriots, and uh, the Dolphins because they did us a big solid yesterday. And by them winning, uh, it, it it lessened the frustration a little bit. And, uh, you know, we're only one game out and we got 15 more games to go. We can write this. 
it's up to the staff and the players to do it. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, talk about picks or anything, but somebody on this podcast said that all three other division teams were going to lose. I'm not saying who that person is, but he's sitting right here. Um, It'd been nice to go four and zero though, because I also picked the Bengals to beat beat Dallas. I think thirty one to ten. That didn't happen. I, I'm with you, Mon. I, again, um, we're gonna. I really want to unpack this because there is there is a lot to discuss. And, and you know, listeners, Mon and I, Mon and I are not. We are not uh, gonna bring a bunch of negativity, but we are also realists. And, uh, you know, we, we see what we see, and we're going to talk about what we see. But before we do, Mon, let's get into the stats really quick. Uh, Joe Burrow, 24 of 36, 199 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions this week, uh, no, no turnovers this week uh, for a Bengals offense that turned the ball over five times uh, the week before. Uh, Joe Burrow was sacked six times, Mon. We are now, we are now getting to uh, the panic mode. I, I think a, a lot of us are. Uh, we're tired of seeing Joe Burrow get hit every play. It seems like every time he drops back, he's getting hit. Sacked thirteen times in the first two games, Mon. Uh, not good. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, Joe Mixon, 19 carries for 57 yards, just never really seemed to get going. Um, you know, Tampa ran the ball well against Dallas the week before, and, and uh, we just we could not get the running game going. Uh, that's only three yards a, a, a per attempt. Uh, again, uh, very frustrating. T. Higgins comes back from his injury. He's the leading receiver. Six receptions, 71 yards, and a touchdown. Jamar Chase, five catches for 54 yards. Uh, Hayden Hurst had another five-reception game, but for only 24 yards uh, for him. Uh, leading, uh, leading tacklers, Von Bell uh, with seven total tackles. DJ Reader. Uh, Awuzie and Pratt and BJ Hill all with five tackles. Uh, Sam Hubbard had uh, the only Bengals sack where, again, we're going to talk about that Bengals defense. Uh, and then, you know, we did finally have a turnover, a fumble recovery, but still two weeks in playing two bad quarterbacks not an interception yet on this Bengals uh, defense. Again, something that I think we definitely need to look at as being an issue. Uh, Money Mac, Evan McPherson, three for three, his long of 50. Uh, he seemed to be back. The long snaps seemed to be good. Um, so that part of, of the Bengals, uh, that phase of the Bengals team, Special teams uh, seem to be better uh, than what we saw on week one. Uh, and really quick, this is, I think this is a thing that is the most frustrating. Obviously, you know, Mon, uh, you and I, we go back and forth, offense versus defense. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's something I think you and I have always done <laughs> since we've known each other. But this defense allowed Cooper Rush in his second start ever – to go 19 of 31, 235 yards, a touchdown, only sacked once. Um, the Bengals' defense did hold uh, Elliott to 53 yards rushing, and uh, and Tony Pollard had had that uh, that long touchdown run, uh, which you don't see that very often in the NFL. A guy get the edge like that and take it to that uh, take it to the house. So. Um, Ma, what do you think? Offense, defense. Let's let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about this Bengals. Actually, let's do this first. Let's talk about this Bengals defense first. Uh, what do you think about their performance against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday, Mon? You know, uh, um, over the la the Pittsburgh game and the Dallas game, it is concerning uh, with the lack of sacks, lack of interceptions, big plays. Um, the first two drives of the Cowboy game were alarming. But, you know, listen, uh, McCarthy is a West Coast guy. Him and uh, uh, 
the guy from Kansas City, all these West Coast, they, 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 they script the first 20, 25 plays. Listen, the Bengals weren't ready for it, but guess what happened after that? They settled down. They, they basically shut the Cowboys out in the second half. They did get the game-winning field goal, but they didn't do anything after those first two drives. Um, yeah, they gave up a couple key receptions to Cooper Rush, but I think the defense played well enough to win. We're going to talk about the offense in a few minutes, but I, I think, listen, we definitely need some big plays. We need some interceptions. I need to see some sacks. But you know what? Teams are adjusting. I think they're chipping Trey Hendrickson. They're going to make it harder on him to to produce like he did last year. They're making it harder on offense for Chase and Burrow to do the things they did successfully last year. The defense is going to have to adjust to get those big plays. But in the grand scheme of things, yes, there's so many things to worry about when it comes to the Bengals in 2022. I don't think the defense is near the top. I think it's something that they definitely need to adjust. But the defense has played well enough the last two weeks to win. And if it wasn't for the turnovers in Pittsburgh, it wasn't for the slow start against the uh, uh, the Cowboys. I mean, our, our offense was putrid. I have some stats for you in a second. Uh, we should be two and up. Yeah, I agree. I I, I think the, these are the three things that are alarming to me when it comes to to us defensively. Number one, you know, uh, the the slow start against the Cowboys is a little bit alarming. Um, like you said, those first couple drives, you know, uh, again, our struggles, Lou Anarumo, he struggles against these young quarterbacks, these guys that come in off the street pretty much, uh, you know, with, with white last year, uh, with the jets and, and now with Cooper rush, these guys, you know, coach Lou's got to do a better job of, of putting a, a defense together. Uh, you know, especially when you're playing a, a young quarterback like that, you have got you have got to put pressure on him. You have got to make him uncomfortable in the pocket. And it seemed like he had all day back there. The the lack of pass rush with this Bengals team right now is is alarming. And and when you're not getting pressure with that front four, you know you you got to start bringing pressure from other places, whether it's you know, from the from the micro will backer or, you know, you bring it from the nickel corner, that strong safety and the Bengals. I just I'm not very happy with the scheme. They're running defensively these first two games, uh, not bringing pressure against Mitchell Trubisky and and Cooper Rush. I, I mean, it's not like we're talking about guys that that are are you know vets in the league that have these incredible receivers to throw to although Noah Brown looked like a, a pro bowler against us uh, again it's frustrating to me to see these guys like Noah Brown and 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 Cooper Rush and these guys uh you know just just pretty much pick us apart uh defensively and, and, the, and the last thing is man we got to get turnovers you know when your offense is struggling mon your defense has got to create turnovers. I'm not saying put the game in the defense's hands, but sometimes you have to. And last year, the defense did a really good job when our offense struggled of putting pressure on the quarterback and getting turnovers, flipping that field position. Uh, you know, our, our starting field position uh, was not great. And again, part of that is defensively, you've got to create opportunities for your offense uh, i'm not saying the defense has got to win you football games but when your offense is playing as bad as ours it really the defense has to make plays and they're not making plays right now yeah you know uh, the first two drives I, I don't have the exact numbers but i i think dallas had almost 50 percent of their offense for the whole game on the first two drives of the game I think the Bengal defense did a very good job slowing them down, shutting them down. And after the first two drives, yeah, they didn't get the turnovers. That one tip pass at the end, sometimes Lady Luck is just on the side of the other team. Tipped ball, Von Bell and Cheeto are zeroing in on an interception. And then this Noah Brown just comes out of nowhere and catches it. on a, I mean, it, it wasn't just a glance. It was a massive tip. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes just lady luck happened. It happened, and you know, um, 
Hubbard had one go through his hands. Um, Hilton had the Hilton ones would have been tough interceptions, but yeah. still he got his hands on them. We got to get one of those. We just got to get one of those. Listen, by by no means the, the first two drives by the defense. Hey, uh, they were ugly, but they settled down. And like I said, I really think the defense is the least of our worries right now. We have a glaring, glaring issue that I'm telling you right now, if it's not fixed soon, we are going to be in serious trouble. We'll be drafting in the top 10. I hope, I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if we don't get the offensive line fixed, it could happen. I agree. I agree. Well, and, and again, you know, a lot of the time with, with luck and football, you, you create your own luck. You know what I mean? And, and a team that's not playing good football, like we are not playing. Uh, and we saw it week one where, you know, we weren't playing very well in all three phases. Defense played uh, played, played good week one, but we're just not seeing that complete game from all three phases. And, when you know, a, a lot of times when you get lucky tips and those kind of things, the Bengals got those last year, but they created those by playing good football. And right now we're not playing good football. We're just not. And, uh, you know, th- there's no other way to say it. Let, let's talk about offensively because obviously – this is this is what is the most of alarming right now on this football team is I, you look at the 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 offensive roster and it's just again it's it doesn't even make sense how we cannot put together drives it, it and and it you know a lot of times w- when that's the case there's a lot of things factoring into it obviously you know players have to execute but I said it last week, and I'm going to say it again. This coaching staff has got to do better. They have got to be better. Uh, you know, at one point, at one point, you you have to look at the staff. You have to look at the guys, the coaches developing these players, which we'll talk about in just a second. You have to look at the play calling and the game management. There's a lot more that goes into it. You know, Sunday – the ball, the ball, them not catching the ball, hitting the scoreboard, did not lose us that football game. What lost us the football game is the the mismanagement of this game and the offensive play calling. Once again, this is three games in a row that we are just seeing poor offensive play calling. And listen, I, I love Zach Taylor. Uh, you know I'm a big Zach Taylor fan as a head coach, but – I think I think we're getting to the point now where it's time to maybe start talking about Coach Callahan taking over the play calling duties because uh, again that I'll go back to that 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 last drive the last drive the Bengals had the ball we just score we go for two we get it we have all the momentum they go three and out and we get pinned we get pinned down you know what was about the fifteen yard line. We got two and a half minutes left. You have one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. You have an incredible group of wide receivers, and you throw a two-yard pass, a three-yard pass, and a three-yard pass. It makes absolutely no sense. And to me, that is playing not to win football. That is playing to go into overtime. And when you're on the road, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You have got to play aggressive and go for the win, especially when you have a guy like Joe Burrow. And that drive right there really tells me everything that I need to know about these first two weeks and the reason why we are 0-2. We saw it week one. We see it again week two. Let Joe Burrow win you football games. The Bengals are not doing that right now. And it is costing us. It is costing us. We're 0-2 because of it, Mom. Jake, um, you bring up a lot of good points. I get the frustration, and I agree with a lot of them. Uh, I I just, listen, I I don't think this is rocket science. And I said this on Twitter with people. I got into some small Twitter battles, people throwing out stats. You know, Joe Burrow had three seconds for this, two points through two-second drop back, all this. Who cares? Listen, this guy's getting pummeled. He's getting lit up. When he did throw the ball, he's getting destroyed. All right, listen, he doesn't have the time to, to or the faith to, to process and deliver. He really doesn't. That is the reason. I think it's affecting 
the playbook. I don't think Zach Taylor has confidence in certain plays. These guys haven't gelled. They haven't adjusted yet. Uh, listen, I said but a few minutes ago. That? Mon, who, whose fault is that? Well, Jake, we could go back in time and say, hey, they should have played him in the preseason. They had four new starters on the line, three free agents and Volson and, and Jonah Williams, who has never played with Volson. You know, that's teamwork. I believe, my opinion, they totally mismanaged the preseason. I don't want Chase playing. I don't want Higgins playing. I don't want Boyd playing or Burrow. Get those guys out there and let them play 10, 15 snaps. Let them communicate and talk to each other. Again, like I said at halftime in uh, 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 the interview with the sideline reporter, Zach Taylor, they're not communicating. Brian Baldinger on Twitter today was breaking down the film. He goes, these guys aren't communicating. He goes, I mean, Parsons had a free shot. Nobody laid a hand on him. That happened Crazy. twice. That's, that's unacceptable. You can make an Crazy. argument he's a top three defensive player in football. How do you not put a hand on him? Crazy. Listen. Joe Burrow, and they're double people, teaming. They were double teaming the tackle. Yeah, a lot of people. Play, it's crazy. Yeah, a, a lot of people are, are you know on Twitter saying Joe doesn't look right. Of course he doesn't look right. Uh, he, he he's he's been rocked the the last two games. This guy, once they improve and listen, this offensive line will improve. I'm not being a homer. They are going to get a lot better. I just hope we're not zero and five or two and four or two and six when this happens. Once they start building that cohesion and gelling look out look out mon and, and he's look, been well, let me say something real quick you said he's been pummeled the last two games joe burrow has been pummeled since he's gotten here oh absolutely absolutely i mean absolutely. he's been sac- i saw a stat today that in in a in a player's first three years or something like that i can't remember what the exact stat was he he has by far been sacked more he's been sacked more than andrew luck was um, and David Carr. I yeah, mean, this, I this guy has taken a beat in mind. He, yeah. He's been sacked like 120 times or something like that. I get, it's ridiculous. And, and Jake, listen, I get the frustration of Coach Taylor. I, I am too. Sometimes I, I, don't, I question some of the play calls. And listen, I'm not trying to sound like an apologist here. I think his play calling, his playbook is limited. I said it last year with the play of the offensive line. I, I still think that way. I, I think he knows his quarterback's getting lit up. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to – they will improve, and once they improve, it's going to be amazing. But I, I want to touch base on something else. The Bengals – the Bengals entered the red zone one time yesterday uh, against the Cowboys. One time. That's on that 19-play drive. That's the only time the whole game they entered the, the Cowboy red zone. That That's crazy. That's, that, crazy. that's just unacceptable. And you know, we're talking about pass blocking and all that. They are terrible at running the ball. You mentioned it last week. Listen, Joe Joe Mixon has three yards per carry average this year. I mean, uh, we all know that defenses are playing safeties deep. They don't want Chase. They don't want Higgins. They don't want Boyd. They don't want these guys killing them with deep passes like last year. So guess what? It's a lighter box. This is when yeah. we're supposed to run. It's, it's not happening. It's not it's happening. It, it's 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 frustrating, and I, I just don't get it. And listen. I'm a big Frank Pollock fan, but I'm starting to question some things. He's the run game coordinator, and he's the offensive line coach. Things have got to click. And listen, they will. This offensive line is going to get much better, and this offense is going to start producing a lot more. But, man, I tell you, they have got to get the run game going because once that happens, the Parsons and the T.J. Watts and all these other guys, hey, man, the, you know that's not their strength. All right? And it might slow up the pass rush a little bit, but until that happens – it's going to be interesting every week. Well, listen, Ma, and I don't disagree with you that the play calling might be limited in some fashion, but two weeks in a row, Mon, two weeks in a row, and really, if you want to count the Super Bowl, we can count the Super Bowl too. The last three games, Joe Burrow has had the ball in his hands at the end of the game, and they are not letting him throw the ball downfield. Again, whether or not whether or not um, the the playbook is limited, I, I, I really that doesn't that really shouldn't have a difference in letting this guy throw throw the ball downfield, be aggressive. You're, you're not going to win games, Mon, playing for overtime on the road. You're just not going to win games doing that. You're not. You got you got way too much talent, and and I understand Joe Burrow's got. 
two seconds or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then you know what? Adjust, adjust the playbook. Get the ball out of his hands faster. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, throw screens. Do stuff Do stuff to, to slow down the pass rush. Uh, and I'm not seeing it, Mon. I'm not seeing it. And I, it's frustrating because I don't understand. I just don't understand our play calling. I just don't. I, I've, I've coached for 21 years. I don't understand. There's no there's no sibilance to it. There, there's no structure to it. It's just, it's almost like throwing darts at a dartboard. And, and it is frustrating when you have that much talent on offense. And, you know, you, you're, uh, you got the ball back with two and a half minutes left and all the momentum and Joe Burrow's throwing two yard passes. It doesn't make any sense. No, I, I agree. I agree. It's frustrating. And, and I'm and I agree with you about Pollitt too. Listen, I'm a big, I'm a big coach Pollock fan. Everybody that's listened to our podcast knows I'm a big fan of his. But at some point, you you, you have to start looking at this staff and 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 the development of players and and putting guys on the field. I mean, Jonah Williams, he looked awful Sunday. He looked awful, Mon. And I, I, to me, he's been in this program now over two years. There's no reason for it. There's no way he should look that bad. I, honestly, he was to me. To me, he was the worst offensive lineman on the field Sunday. Can I give you a hypothetical? Uh, I was on I was in Twitter Spaces today, and uh, like I said, it was very therapeutic for me. I enjoyed being in there. But somebody in the spaces brought up. An interesting topic, and let me ask you this. We talked about Jonah Williams. Some choice words were used. We're not going to use them on this podcast. <laughs> Would you trade Jesse Bates right now for a tackle? That was brought up in spaces. Ooh. There was about 75 people in there, and I'm telling you, a majority said yes, they would. I was actually surprised. Um, but, uh, I'm getting to the point, Mon, where, uh, again, I, I – I don't. I don't have the answer for you for that. It, that's a tough one. It is. Uh, it is. But I will say this: I'm tired on Sundays of watching Joe Burrow on his back. Yeah. That that is getting. And again, you know the reasons for it. There are there are many. I'm sure you can look at the preseason. Again, we have to kind of look at Coach Pollock and say, Coach, you know why are these guys not not gelling why were they not playing the preseason if they aren't going to play the preseason then you should have had some idea that these guys were gelled together before we take the field in the regular season and put Joe Burrow behind that offensive line uh we saw it last year I mean Joe Burrow got sacked 55 times Mon 55 times last year Uh, not including the playoffs you know 70 including the playoffs It, it it just at some point, at some point, and I know, I know a lot of these Bengal fans. They're, they, you know, they're they're behind this coaching staff, and and that's great. And listen, I I, I like these guys. I I'm a big Callahan guy. I, I like Zach Taylor as a head football coach. I I like Pollock. I like these guys, but I also want to win. <laughs> and yeah. at some point, Mon, at some point. You know the players. The players need to execute, but they need to be put in positions to make plays. And right now, I'm not seeing it on either side of the ball where guys are being put in good positions to make plays. And that is on the coaching staff. Yeah, you know your your coaching staff, your players. They all need to be set up to succeed. Absolutely. And, and uh, listen, at every um, level, at every uh, level of football, Jake, you know, this every Monday morning, every Sunday night after a game, your team wins or loses. There's always overreaction, man. We're going to win 15 in a row. Our guy, we this and that. I get it. I get it. And listen, I'm frustrated. You're frustrated. A lot of Bengal fans are. Listen, Joe, uh, Zach Taylor, I'm not a homer, but Zach Taylor and the staff got us to a Super Bowl. Yes. We're in a hole right now. Listen, They've got to figure out some things. Somebody mentioned it today. Teams have figured us out a little bit. They figured out our rush. They figured out part of our defense. They figured out our offense. It's up to them to make these adjustments, and I think they will, and I think everything is going to turn once this offensive line starts to gel. And I think when they do, look out. 
I just hope it's not, I hope it's sooner than, rather than later. Well, Let's yeah. I mean, way. I mean, Mon, you know, we, we are, we're still in this thing. We still have a chance. One Obviously, game back, one I game mean, back. That's it. And we got, and we got 15 to go, but Mon, they better put this thing together. This is not something where every week after the football game, we can all go on Twitter and say, don't, don't worry, Bengal fans. They're going to get it. They're going to put it together. Well, they better hurry up and put it together because the schedule only gets tougher. This was the easy part of their schedule. I mean, Mon, they have lost to two of the worst teams in either conference. The Cowboys and Steelers are not good football teams at all. I mean, before we before we uh, recorded this pod, I'm trying to think of just anything positive anything positive and there is nothing positive from this Sunday there's just nothing to take out of it last Sunday we saw the Bengals move the football up and down the field this Sunday Mon there is nothing positive to take out of this football game Bengal fans and and I'm sorry to be the one to say it I'm usually the biggest homer you you, Mon you tell everybody I'm the biggest homer I am I am the biggest Bengal homer I love this team with all of my heart but, Mon, there's nothing positive about Sunday. You said it before. We were in the red zone one time, Mon, one time on Sunday. That is unacceptable. It is completely unacceptable. And, you know, the, the other part of this thing is I am so grateful for this staff and the year that they gave us last year. But as fans, we can't be complacent. We just can't say, oh, well, they took us to a Super Bowl so it's okay for them to not be coaching the way they should be coaching right now. That we can't do that. That that can't be the case. Listen, I'm still behind this staff, a hundred percent. I'm behind Coach Taylor. I believe in Coach Taylor. But <laughs> Mon, it, it's it's getting it's getting very frustrating. Jake, let me be the homer. Let, let me be the homer now. You are the biggest Bengal homer I know. Uh, Dave Lapham is the second. But I don't know <laughs> Dave, but Dave is the second biggest homer. Listen, uh, last uh, listen, year. Listen, I'm proud to be in the same sentence okay, as Dave uh, Lapham. Okay. I'll take I don't, it. I don't personally know Dave Lapham. Okay, last year we lost to the Jets and Mike White. That was a terrible loss. The Bengals had multiple uh, games last year where they lost two in a row and they would always come back and, and, and find, you know, find a way to correct it. We did lose to Mike white last year. Was that his name? Mike white. Yes. The quarterback for the jets. Okay. Yes. We also beat Patrick Mahomes twice. We beat Lamar Jackson. Okay. And we beat other great quarterbacks. Listen, it was only two games. I get it. I'm frustrated too. Cooper cup, Cooper rush, uh, Trubisky. Listen, we lost to Trubisky. Trubisky didn't beat us. The Bengals beat the Bengals that game. And you know that. All right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the Bengals got to stop playing themselves and, and start playing the opponents. We're only one game back. We play this week in New York. And then we play the Dolphins. In 10 days, we can correct everything. The frustration we're feeling now can be wiped out if we win two games in 10 days. Listen. The Dolphins were amazing yesterday. That team speed is sickening. We're going to talk about predictions over the next couple of weeks in that game. But playing the whiteout game in Cincinnati on Thursday night, they will not beat us. They won't beat us in Cincinnati Thursday night. The town, that stadium is going to be on fire. And I am, I am so confident for that game. We just got to find a way to win next week. We, well, we got I, a lot. We got a lot of football, man. We got a lot yeah, of football. Yeah. Oh, listen, Mon. It, this is this is not something where this is not something we're, we're not at the point of panicking, right? No. no. As, as as a fan base, it's not time to panic. However, however, we we are now getting to the point of you know it, we got to see it corrected. It's got to be corrected uh, because. I agree. I mean, I picked this team to win 13 games, Ma. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's how much I believe in this football team. And there is there is a there's a point of of being you know being in that place where we as fans can say, hey, you know, listen, we're only one game out. We got plenty of football left to play. And then there's another point as fans where 
we need to start looking at this thing like, hey, you, you we need to see this. We need to see these problems being corrected and they have not been corrected yet. They just haven't been. Yeah. You know, we, we've seen the same thing two weeks in a row, just bad offensive play, bad game management, bad play calling. We've seen bad offensive line play. We've seen a defense that is not creating turnovers. I mean, it's the same thing. And eventually, eventually, it's got to be fixed. I, I'm with you. Listen, I still think this team wins this division. I really do. I, I believe the Bengals win this division. But if they don't start correcting this stuff, it's going to be a long season. Jake, you know, listen, um, when, that, when we start clicking on offense – and we go start going marching up and down the field and scoring points. Guess what? Teams are going to have to play catch up. They're going to take more risks. They're going to throw some passes maybe they shouldn't. The defense is going to capitalize there. But let's face it, they know we're struggling on 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 offense. And it, listen, these teams don't have to do anything crazy. And I think that might have something to do with our defensive turnovers and all that. I'm not making excuses for the defense. I think that they have been pretty solid the first two games couple bad drives, but, um, you know, listen, I think it's all going to click once this offensive line gels. I think that is, to me, that's, we have six or seven things that are really need to work on. Offensive line is number one. Once that is fixed, we'll be good to go. Again, two, two more things real quick, and we're going to move on. Um, but number one, Chris Evans still not part of this offense. Makes absolutely no sense to me. And number two, T. Higgins does not get one target in the first half. Absolutely makes no sense to me. Again, I'm not trying to nitpick, but <laughs> I, I am starting to look at this staff like, hey, we need to start. We need to start finding ways to moving the ball up and down the field. Yeah, and and that's that's the coach coming out of me is you know when you're struggling on one side of the ball, you got to find ways. And they're not finding ways right now. But you know, Mom, what the best remedy is for being 0 and 2? Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco <laughs> is the be best. Be careful. Remedy. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> listen, listen, this Jets team comes in obviously a big, just a crazy win in Cleveland. Uh, and really, Mon, is there anything better than watching Cleveland fans in Cleveland after? <laughs> After a game like that, just the look on their faces is absolutely priceless. Um, it's just a, a crazy meltdown. game. What a crazy, meltdown. crazy uh, game. Uh, I was you know, watching the Steeler game and you were texting me and you go, Jets. I'm like, what's this? What's wrong with this guy? It's over. Yeah. And then I flick it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what's happening. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that's obviously going to give the Jets some momentum. There's no doubt about it. And this Jets team, you know, uh, they're going to be tough. I mean, this is not going to be a game where the Bengals are going to be able to go into New York and this team is going to uh, just let us go up and down the field on them. This Jeff, this Jets team is tough. Um, you know, offensively, offensively, they score 31 points against the Cleveland Browns. And again, that 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 second half, Mon, they went up and down the field uh, on the Cleveland Browns. So. Uh, you know, th this team, this team that we play this week, it's going to be a tough matchup and we struggle for some reason against the Jets. I don't understand. It doesn't matter who's at quarterback, um, you know, whether it's Mike White or uh, uh, Mark Sanchez. I mean, I still can't believe he beat us in, in 09. Good Lord, that was embarrassing. Um, we have struggled against this football team and uh, but, you know, like I said, the best remedy for being 0-2 is Joe Flacco, Mom. What do you think about the Jets? Yeah, I uh, like I said, I did watch most of the game. Then I tailed off, started watching the Steeler game yesterday, and I had no idea they were making a comeback until you contacted me. And, well, I mean, I tell you what, the meltdown in the Brown stand was in the Brown stands was hilarious. Uh, listen, Flacco had four TDs yesterday. I, I, I'm shocked by that. And the, the parts of the games that I watched, they were running up and down the field on them. They were doing a yeah. good job running, and and uh, that was actually surprising. Listen, the, the Browns have Denzel Ward, Miles Garrett. They have a lot of really good players, and they put 31 on them. That's pretty impressive in Cleveland. Yes. I'll tell you, the one good thing about this game, very emotional for the Jets. They're, you know, just so pumped up. You know, they, they gave it their all. 
you know, maybe they'll be due for a little bit of a letdown next week. You know, they, they played their hearts out, a very emotional game for them. Yes, it is at home, but, uh, um, you know, Cincinnati is going to remember what happened last year. They're going to come in. I, I think last year's game, I think the Bengals played down. I, I think they went in like, hey, man, you know what? We're going to whip no up doubt. this team. And I, I think well, it was they, Mike White. Yeah, Mike White I think was it, quarterback. It caught him off guard. And then by the time they tried to turn it on, it was too late. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, it was a horrible pick by Burrow, by defensive lineman. We had, I think, a 10-point lead at that time. Yeah. And the next, you know, they scored and it just went downhill from there. But, uh, yeah, I, the, the Jets, listen, they got some good players. Uh, Lawson, our guys over there, he played well yesterday. Um, you know, a uh, couple good safeties over there. And, uh, you know, what? We'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, they, they definitely, I was impressed with the uh, running game. Well, Quan Alexander made some good plays. They got C.J. Mosley. LaMarcus Joyner played really good. Um, Lawson had a half a sack. Uh, the, the defensive lineman Williams is really good also. So listen, that offensive line, I hope they, uh, hope they play better next week because the jets definitely have some studs on that uh, defensive line. Uh, let me ask you something on. Yes. Is it, is this a must win for Cincinnati? You know what? I, I'm glad you asked that question because I was thinking about that today, Jake, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, because if they lose three in a row, the, the strength of this team last year was their mental toughness, that locker room. Buddy, if, they're, if they lose the first three games of the 2022 season, that is really going to put it, – it, it's going to put a strain on that. And yeah. I don't want to see it. I don't want that tested. I, I, think, I think it's a must win. I, if they don't, it's going to be ugly, I think. I agree. I agree. I think this is a must win. I mean, I don't think there's – I don't even think there's any doubt about it. The Bengals have to win this football game. They really do. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you know, uh, you cannot you cannot count on everyone in your division losing every week like that. You just can't count on that. And yeah. um, this this is to me this is a absolute must win for our Cincinnati Bengals to get this thing this ship righted. Um, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I said it. I said it last week. And I don't want to. I don't want to jinx myself, but I really, I really find it hard to believe that this Bengal team does not come out and light it up on Sunday. Um, you know, I, I know I said that last week, and, and uh, you know, I, I stand by that. But uh, th- this Bengal team, that offensively, they have got to. They have got to look themselves in the mirror, and and everybody has got to fix um, their job, and uh, I think we'll be okay. But this is a must win on Sunday. There's no doubt about it. It is, and uh, I, um, I mean, I'm ready for my predictions because I feel very confident about my selections this week. Well, and, you, you, uh, def- you definitely you know this is the thing, Mons. You can't you can't lose to Mitchell Trubisky, Cooper Rush, and Joe Flacco. You cannot lose the first three games of the season to those three guys. You just can't. You can't do that. Um, let's get into the. Let's get into our our predictions. Um, I definitely, I definitely um, uh, took uh, took the crown last week. You sure uh, did. And I'm glad you did. <laughs> picking three out of four. Um, let, let's let's talk about let's talk about the Brown Steelers this week. Um, I really hope it ends in a tie, to be honest with you. Uh, but what do you think? What do you think, Brown Steelers? Brown's horrible loss last week to the Jets. Playing at home in prime time, it's not going to be close. They are going to be jacked up. Listen, playing at home in prime time is a seven-point lead before the game starts. I really think that. Uh, they're they're going to be so fired up. 21-9 over the Steelers. Wow. I have I have the Browns winning twenty one to ten over the Steelers. So there we go. Wow, we we are one point off on that one. 21-10, 21-9 for you. We both have the Browns. We got Ravens Patriots. Mon, who do you got? You know what? Uh, the 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 Pats last week really impressed me against the Steelers. I know the Steelers aren't a good team, but again, playing in Pittsburgh. Listen, Bill Belichick is one hell of a coach. He I told really you, is, man. He doesn't this lose guy, two games. No, he does. You know, this guy, man, his teams are just ready. And, you know, I, I personally, I can't stand that quarterback for them. 
I, I just something about that guy. I mean, Matt Jones? It, it, yeah, it, yeah. I, I just want to throw chop this guy. I, I, I don't know. I just don't like him, man. And but you know what? He came out there. He is tough as nails, and he he played he played tough against the Steelers. I have the Patriots winning twenty to seventeen at home against the Ravens. All right. I also have the Patriots winning. I have the Patriots winning twenty one to seventeen. Oh, we gosh. are again one point off from each other in both games, picking both uh, the Patriots and the Browns. I say twenty one seventeen. You say twenty seventeen. All right. <clears throat> Let's get to the important one, Mon. You and I both think it. This is a must win for our Cincinnati Bengals, Mon. What do you think? What are we going to see on Sunday against the New York Jets? What's your prediction? I think this is going to be the best game of the year so far for the team. That's not saying much. Uh, I think uh, I, I think that the, the offense is going to wake up a little bit. Uh, I see them winning 31-17. I'm going to predict right now an unconventional score for the team. I see a, a defensive touchdown, and uh, I, I, the Bengals will win 31-17. I have the Bengals winning 27 to 14. Bengals over Jets 27 to 14. I'm with you. I think we see I think we see that defense come up big. Uh, I think we see a couple turnovers. We've always been able to count on Joe Flacco for that. Um I I think this I think this is where the Bengals turn this thing around. Again, you know, these AFC games you have to win those games, right? You can you can drop a couple NFC games, but when it's conference games like these against teams that are not very good, you have got to take advantage of these games. I, I think the Bengals uh, hopefully have a chip on their shoulder now after these first two weeks, and I think we see I think we see a, a Bengals team come out and dominate this football game. You know. This is the this is the one thing that is really uh, that is really crazy to think is this Bengals team has lost its first two games on the last play of the game, and I'm not sure the Bengals have played this poorly all year last year, and it still took the last play of the game to lose. So I guess if there's one positive, it's this: the Bengals um, they are playing to the very end. Um, and hopefully, hopefully that is what carries this team the rest of the year. I, I still think this Bengals team wins this division. I believe in this staff. I believe in coach Taylor. Um, I just, I just need to see it, you know, I'm on, I just need to see it on Sunday. Yeah. Um, I agree with you, man. I agree with everything that you're saying. Uh, I think they're going to show up. I think they're going to, uh, come out with a win. Uh, I think this team is, uh, you know, I'm glad they're going to be playing in four days or five days, playing on Thursday night right after, because you know what? I think we'll be two and two after that Dolphin game on Thursday night. So, listen, it's going to be a little bit of a reset for the season. And like I said, we're only one game back, only one game back. Those other teams helped us out tremendously Sunday. And look out, uh, once that line gels, like I said 20 times before, this offense is really going to take off and it's everything's going to fall in place. I agree. I agree. And hopefully this Sunday Zim stays in our text chat. <laughs> Zim, yeah. left, Zim left our text chat <laughs> probably because of me. Um, it, it was funny. You text me. You're like, uh, a little I'm, bit overreaction, a little bit overreaction. <laughs> you okay. text me. You're like, I think Zim left the chat. <laughs> yeah. uh, but our guy Zim, Zim, don't leave the chat. I promise. I promise. Uh, hopefully, this week this week goes good, and uh, there's more positivity uh, in our group chat. But that is another edition of the Bengals Pulse, uh, guys. If you like this uh, podcast, make sure you like, subscribe, and share it. Make sure you check us out on all the different podcast platforms: Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Uh, again, if you enjoyed listening to this, please give us that five star review. We would very much appreciate it. Follow us on Twitter at Bengals underscore Pulse 9 and on Instagram at the same without the at Bengals underscore Pulse 9. Uh, once again, two guys, check out all the podcasts right here on the Wincinnati 
Podcast Network, our guys Ace and Zim. Again, they put together this this thing, and we are rocking and rolling. Once again, guys, another edition of the Bengals Pulse. Hopefully, Mon, next week, we are talking and celebrating the first Bengals victory of the season. Yep. One and two. All right, right, here we go. One and two. He is Mon. I am Jake. This is the Bengals Pulse. We will see you next week, Bengal fans. Who day?